Hey, welcome back to the shop. Finally, I'm going to talk about my single lip cutter grinder. I got a lot of requests on the on this machine to to go a bit more in detail. I used it a lot when I did various projects here on this um, on the channel, but I never went into detail about this machine. And I get various emails and comments in the uh, down in the comment section uh, where people asked about this machine and um, if I could talk a bit more about it and um, <laughs> I tried a few times to make a video about this guy but yeah um, didn't didn't work out until now so this is a single lip color grinder or in some parts of the world it's referred as a D-bit grinder I will use both terms um, as a synonym, just uh, what, uh, doesn't matter. Um, basically it's a very simple tool and cutter grinder. This is modeled after the Deckel SO tool and cutter grinder, which is a, a very very high quality cutter grinder made in Germany back in the days and it's still made today by Michael Deckel uh, and costs a fortune and at first I wanted to buy a used Deckel tool cutter grinder but those the price range on those is between expensive and horrible expensive so I went again with a Chinese machine this is from one of the import uh, sellers uh, and this costs about 600 to a thousand bucks just to give you an overview of the machine um, it's, it's not very large you have a grinding spindle up here which takes grinding wheels up to 100 millimeter in diameter and it's made for a diameter of 100 millimeter with smaller wheels the the surface speed of the grain wheel doesn't match anymore but you can do it um, the spindle can be moved in and out over here with this hand wheel the spindle moves in and out you need this um, mainly for dressing aluminum oxide or silicon carbide wheels um, but it's also useful to change the work envelope if you get in a snag with the movements. And down here you have the work head. Um, there is a main axle through the whole casting here, which has a fine adjustment screw here on the left side, which moves. This has about 10 to 15 millimeter travel. And this moves this whole front bar with the work head side to side. And this is your fine adjustment. This um, the work head with the bar here can swivel and as I said move side to side. You have a, a stop nut down here which limits the travel to the grinding wheel. You see when I turn the screw in um, I can't reach as far to the grinding wheel. And over here is a locking handle so you can lock the head in position. This is the work head. Um, you have a number of joints on this guy. First you have this clamp down here. If you loosen this you can move the whole work head freely along the main axle. You can move it and you can uh, tilt it in whatever position you want. Then you can lock it back in place. And you have a first adjustment here which allows you to tilt the head from side to side. And if we go up a bit more we find another joint here. If we unlock it we can turn this whole work head. Um, Normally it's limited to 90 plus, uh, 0 to 90 degrees, but there is a locking pin down here. Then you can go a bit farther 
but normally you don't need that. Then if you move on, we get an XY cross slide here, which can move side to side and back and forth. And side to side is, you have to undo this, and then you turn this adjustment screw here and the whole work head moves side to side. And you lock it back in place. And then you have the work head up here which is basically a dividing head, a small, small dividing head that takes collets. You can get this machine to accept 5C collets or um, these uh, collets with a 20mm shank and a 20 by 2 buttress thread. Um, this is also referred as a decal style collet because the Deckly FP1 milling machine and its accessories took this collets. Um, a few years ago it was quite hard to get these collets, but now they are made in China and you can get them for very little money. But as I said, there's also a, a version of this machine that takes 5C collets. I didn't go for the 5C machine as uh, the dividing head of the 5C version is bought here, and I don't like that. Uh, back here is the draw nut for the collet. And that's basically it. Up here you have your indent for the dividing head. The dividing head has 24 positions. You can set it to spin freely. If you do cylindrical grinding. And you can uh, lock the rotation to 180 degrees, which you need to grind the relief on engraving cutters or single lip cutters. That's the basic overview of the machine. This machine runs 230 volts single phase, so it runs on a normal household outlet. Um, they are also available in 3 phase 400 volt and I'm pretty sure that they are also available in, uh, what do you have, 120 volt single phase. Um, as you heard, it runs quite smooth. Um, I don't have any complaints about this machine. Um, out of the box it did everything I wanted. It was yeah, I didn't even need to clean very much on it. it. Took it out of the box and started to use it. Um, I did some minor modifications later to it, but I will talk about that later. Um, first, I want to show you some examples of work you can do with this machine. So let's go over to a bench and take a look at it. And by the way, there is an excellent manual for the Deckel SO grinder. Um, just Google it, uh, Deckel SO manual, PDF, whatever, um, and you will find it. That's the original manual for the Deckel SO grinder, where in, it is in, explained in detail how to grind single lip cutters of various shapes, um, no matter if you want a straight, an angled, uh, one with a rounded tip or compound shapes. Um, it's all explained step by step how to grind it and if you set up the machine like it's explained in the manual you will get perfect results. The manual that came with this machine is uh, uh, <laughs> um, rather useless. Let's, let's keep it that way. It's not very, no, not very good. So let's go to a bench and look at some examples of uh, work that I do with this grinder. So. The main use for this grinder are, of course, single lip cutters. A single lip cutter is basically a piece of tool steel or carbide that's cut in half. You can do that on the single lip grinder. 
then you grind the profile on it that you need and then you relieve the back. You can see the relief grind that, that goes over in a facet here. The facet is the relief angle and then it's just ground back. And those are various shapes that I ground recently. This is one for engraving with a approximately 60 degree tip. Here is one with a with an radius. This is about a, a 2.5 millimeter radius, I think. Of course, it has only a radius over here, and uh, the side which doesn't cut is is ground back and relieved. And here you can see again the back relief grind, the relief facet, and then it's just ground back. This is a bit more unique. This is a dovetail cutter, a very, very tiny dovetail cutter. This is all, this is carbide, four millimeter carbide shank. And I used this to cut a small dovetail for a dial test indicator. In fact, I used that on my squareness comparator. So um, this makes the single cutter grinder a very powerful tool if you don't have to buy an expensive small dovetail cutter, but you can grind it yourself if you need one in a pinch. And I use this to machine tool steel, not just plastic. And over here is a custom chamfering tool. I needed a, yeah, what's that? A 60 degree chamfer or something like that on, a, on the edge of a part, and I ground my own chamfering tool for that. Use that also on the milling machine. So similar cutters are a great tool. I grind them whenever I need a special tool. I do that also at work, um, even if I run a CNC machine where I can um, interpolate um, freeform, sometimes it's faster to use a form tool. And I have a, a Dactyl SO single cutter grinder at work that I use the hell out of. So that's single lip cutters. Oh, here's a big one. Um, I used this to drill a 60 degree counter bore. That's a 12 millimeter carbide shank. Oh no, there it is engraved. Uh, 50 degree counter bore. Second thing I use it very much for is to relieve the shanks of end mills. If you have a normal end mill with um, this flute length here, about this is a four millimeter end mill this can go down about nine millimeter deep but you want to machine a slot that's 15 millimeter deep with it or a pocket or whatever um, you can either buy an end mill with that is already relieved one that has um, longer cutting flutes or you can grind your own uh, relief back here and an end mill with long flutes is often the worst option because they are very unstable. A relieved end mill that you buy readily available is rather expensive for some reason. So grinding or relieving the end mills by yourself is often very cheap. Um, some people do it with a spinner, a spinning jig on the surface grinder. You can also do it with the cordless drill on the bench grinder. With the right wheel or you can use the single lip cutter grinder which is quite fast um, basically that means you just grind the diameter of the shank behind the the flutes slightly smaller in diameter than the cutting flutes uh, in this case formula the m mill i think this back here has about 3.8 millimeters and then you can go down as deep as you relieve the, the shank of the end mill. That's also very powerful if you have this ability in your shop. Uh, this is a 4mm end mill that has had to go down quite far. There's a 3mm high speed steel that I relieved and a 6mm end mill. This has a 6mm shank but if you go down farther than the, the flutes the 6mm shank will rub so 
I relieved it down slightly on the grinder. And then there are numbers of special things you can do. Uh, this is a custom T-slot cutter. Um, I needed a small 10 mm T-slot. So I took a, a 10 mm carbide end mill and I just plunged in with a grinding wheel on the, on the single lip cutter grinder. And that way I created a makeshift T-slot cutter. Of course it has no relief here on the back so it will rub slightly but it worked perfectly. I used this also in, uh, in tool steel to cut a T-slot. Worked out perfectly fine. Okay let's go quickly through the wheel selection I use for this grinder. Right now I have something a bit more special on it. <laughs> this is a combination of a narrow diamond wheel and a a small cup wheel, also diamond, and I use this for freehand grinding because I can grind flat surfaces on the cup wheel and I can cut uh, chip breakers on the diamond wheel over here on the narrow one with, with the big radius. That's a bit, a, bit, a bit unique. To change the grinding wheel you just undo the screw that holds it And, this, and the grinding wheel sits on a taper and you flip the wrench around and you have an M8 thread a screw here and you can just pull it off the taper and there it is that's the, that's my combination wheel um, the grinder came with this diamond wheel here, a diamond cup wheel, and that's what I use for carbide um, when I grind single lip cutters. It goes on here. And just use the screw and lock it in place. Uh, this is a very inexpensive diamond wheel and I use the heck out of it. I use it for carbide, I use it for super fine grinding on high speed steel, which you shouldn't do at all. I use it to grind my tungsten for the TIG tick welder and yeah, I abuse this wheel like, <laughs> uh, like you shouldn't. Then another important wheel for the grinder is an aluminum oxide cup wheel. This one has the outer, outer layer is reinforced with resin so um, it holds its sharp edge longer. These are slightly more expensive than a plain or aluminum oxide wheel, but the, the five bucks extra are worth it. And that's um, and these wheels need dressing, of course, as every aluminum oxide wheel, because they break down and you need to re-sharpen the edge. Just lock it in place. And this grinder has up here a diamond dresser that you can flip down and use to, grind, uh, to dress the, the wheel. You advance the grinding wheel like this with over here on the screw into the diamond and then you just uh, dress the face of the, of the wheel. And the last wheel I use a lot on this grinder is a a plain, straight, narrow diamond wheel. I use this especially for relieving end mills and for doing stuff like grinding this um, T-slot cutter because I just plunged in with the diamond wheel where I needed the, the neck. This is also a rather inexpensive wheel. Um, you can get if you keep your eyes open on eBay, you will find um, rather expensive diamond wheels and you will find some that are a bit more on the reasonable side of money. And so far I only had luck with the cheaper wheels. And as I showed in my video with the... Um, where I made these wheel flanges or these wheel adapters, these fit either my single cut grinder and they fit also my 
surface grinder, so they are dual purpose. And each wheel gets mounted to its own adapter. It's not as critical with the diamond wheels, but the aluminum oxide wheels will need quite a heavy redress if you pull them off the adapter and back on. If you keep them on the adapter and just pull it off the taper of the spindle, they only need a very minor redressing. Okay, I wanted to show you one or two grinding operations on this machine before we end and we're going to use the um, aluminum oxide wheel and first we need to dress it. So dressing makes a lot of dirt. Um, all the abrasive aluminum oxide grit that gets in the air and spread all over the shop. So I use a I use the shop vac to, to catch most of the grit directly at the diamond. Okay, now we face the, the wheel to run through and to have a sharp, sharp corner. And another main use for this grinder that I didn't show you over at the bench is to regrind the cutting edges, the front cutting edges of an end mill. This is a 12 millimeter high speed steel end mill, and I will show you how I regrind these on the single lip cutter grinder. So, this end mill has a 12 millimeter shank, 12 millimeter collet. I have the dial on the dividing head down here at zero, and the cutting edges get aligned. So, this is a two flute end mill and they get aligned so they are almost leveled or pretty much leveled doesn't need to be super accurate next we swivel this over 90 degrees but when we grind the front cutting edges at 90 degrees the end mill will drop um, you, you wouldn't be able to use it to um, to face mill with it um, that means we have to turn this a few degrees back. Uh, two degrees or something like that would be plenty enough. So we get a hollow grind on the front. And the secret about tool grinding it, the angles are not super critical. Um, I, could, I could hollow grind this at this angle too. The cutting edges wouldn't last as long because the angle would get very acute, but it would work. Um, a lot of low-end tool grinding is just gut feeling. Um, and that's my little dirty secret about tool grinding. Okay, now we just turn on the grinding spindle. And we advance the cutter into the grinding wheel. Then we, we turn at 180 degrees and grind the second side.
Okay, you saw me going past the center line of the end mill and I do this so the center is also relieved. The drawback to this technique is that you lose the ability of the end mill to plunge. You can still go down into a material on a ramp, but you cannot um, plunge down like you would with a drill bit because you lose the center cutting edge. Doesn't matter for me because I don't plunge with end mills very much into solid material. I pre drill. But this is a very simple way to elongate the life of an end mill uh, by great extent. Normally, you just ruin the first one or two millimeters of an end mill. And you take it, you just grind the dull area off, and you can use the end mill up until there's nothing left. And that's really a, a very powerful feature um, if you don't have to buy super expensive end mills over and over or send them out to be resharpened anytime you nick an edge. You just shorten it by the, um, by the amount of dullness and you're good to go. And I can show you on the milling machine that this end mill will cut again. Okay, I got the the 12 mm end mill that we just resharpened on the end in a milling machine of a piece of um, carbon steel C45 clamped up to the table and now we will just take a very light skim pass so we see if the if the front cutting edges work again or if we messed them up completely uh, running at 1000 rpm and going with power feet. Okay, and as you can see works perfectly fine. I took one pass with a bit higher feet which leaves a not so nice finish and over here with the slower feet we got a perfectly fine finish. Um, let's let's do one one pass with, uh, with a, a bit more depth of cut. This is a one millimeter deep cut. I'm um, going to use some water soluble oil. Okay. I think that's perfectly fine. Looks like a reasonable finish to me. And we got a new life out of this end mill. And as I said, when you dull the first one or two millimeters of the end mill, just lop it off on the grinder and form new grinding edges. Uh, there is no... The end mill is broken already and if you use a dull end mill to learn how to resharpen it, you don't do dam any damage to it. You can only make it better. You can't <laughs> uh, fuck it up more than it already is. So that's, that's, a, a, that's a great use for the single lip cutter grinder. Uh, squeezing more life out of expensive end mills. When you take a look at my board with my recently or much used end mills, pretty much 90% of them are resharpened by myself. This one is resharpened, this, uh, all, all these with, with uh, where, where no, no coating is left on the front of the end mill. All those end mills are resharpened by myself and I do that to increase the life of them. That's quite... I like that. Um, I, <laughs> I'm cheap. End mills are not cheap. A good carbide end mill costs 10, 30, 50 bucks. 
If I can regrind this end mill in five minutes and it doesn't take much longer, um, I increase the life of this tool by a great extent. I will not regrind finishing end mills like the six fluter because I will send this guy out to be resharpened when some once it's dull. Uh, because with the six flutes in front here, uh, you cannot regrind these very well on the single cutter grinder. You get into issues where you cannot reach in in there with a cup wheel, with the with the standard cup wheel. So you need a very narrow grinding wheel, which I don't have. Another major use for the grinder is to, as I said, is to relieve the shank of end mills. Let's say we want to go with this end mill deeper. We want the mach to machine a pocket that is roughly 25 millimeters deep. We can't do that because uh, this is a reground end mill. This has only 7.5 millimeters in diameter and the shank is 8 millimeters. So we have to neck down the shank smaller than the diameter of the cutting flutes to the length we want to the depth we want to go and to do that we flip flip the work head around we don't need to touch the angle setting down here if there is something set we can leave it doesn't interfere with our grinding i have an eight millimeter collet in here i clamp Clamp the end mill up, bring it up, bring it roughly in position, close to the grinding wheel. And then I disengage the, the index pin of the dividing head so I can free spin it. There is one difference between the Chinese work head, this one, and the Deckel SO uh, work head. The deckle has the spindle running directly in the casting. There is no ball bearing. This head has two ball bearings that are preloaded against each other and I think that's the better solution because the spindle on the deckle SO work heads is a wear point. Um, if they are used and abused they <laughs> they get loose, they get very loose and this one has ball bearings so if they ever get loose you just throw them out by two new high quality ball bearings from SKF or somewhere else, put them in and you're good to go. Then you just bring it up, turn on the spindle, then you turn the work hat and advance it into the, into the grinding wheel. Okay, that way we ground a very heavy uh, relief behind the cutting flutes on the end mill. And now we could machine a slot that is roughly 25 millimeters deep with this end mill. Of course, not in one pass because back here we have no cutting edges, but we could step down into a pocket or a slot 25 millimeters with this guy. And this is what I need at work all the time because I have a lot of small tools and I have to go down very deep when I machine parts. Um, I relieve one millimeter end mills 20 millimeters long to reach down into cavities when I do prototype machining. Um, you can buy those end mills, but those are horrible expensive when you have to order them from tooling supply. That way I can use a <laughs> five buck PCB end mill and neck it down and I'm good to go. 
And I have a, a machine maintenance tip for you. Um, when you have grinders in your shop, uh, keep a brush handy to, to clean off the grinding dust and mark the handle of the brush some way. With, I use, I just use a uh, green electrician's tape to mark all the brushes in my shop that I use on grinders. And I do this so I know that it's a brush for a grinder. Um, because I don't want to use this on my other machines, otherwise I would carry the grinding dust that sits between the bristles over to the other machines where they might do very bad things. And also on, on something like this tool cutter grinder, always before you make any adjustment, clean off the grinding dust from sliding surfaces like this front bar. Before you move, before you move the work head around, brush off the grinding dust. Otherwise you will get grinding dust between the mating surfaces and they will do bad damage. Uh, same up here, get the grinding dust off. And don't use the brush you use on your grinder for other machines. That's my two cents on grinder care. <laughs> and don't oil, if you have a deep bit grinder, don't use oil on this front bar or on the slides. Uh, use a dry lubricant like molybdenum disulfide or stuff like that. Um, oil will attract and catch grinding dust and uh, grit from dressing and wreak havoc in, in the slides. So be careful what you do around your grinders. I have seen numerous, n numerous very worn out Deckel SO grinders and I have rebuilt about five or six of these work hats for the Deckel SO grinders myself for other people. As I said earlier, the machine worked out of the box pretty well. I didn't do anything to it at first. Last year around Christmas I took this upper half of the work hat apart and I remachined the the dovetail for the small cross slide where you can move it side to side and back and forth. You need this movement only for setup when you grind radii on the end of stuff. Um, those were not very well machined. As long as they are clamped that's perfectly fine but when you had to adjust them they were a bit eh, sloppy. So I remachined them. I have a link down in the description where I have a bunch of photos where I show the, the remachining of these parts. They also made a new, new scale in here that shows the set over from, from the rotation point. And that's also the reason why I have a hole with a pin in here. And that's the center of rotation of this work head. That's just a help for me when I have to align things. So that's the small deep bit grinder. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. This is a machine that you don't see very often in hobby shops. You see them a lot in professional shops and CN even CNC shops most of the time have one of these somewhere sitting in a corner. And they are super useful. They have not the capability of a full blown um, tool and cutter grinder, not anywhere near. They can do a lot, not very well, but they can do a lot. You can grind lathe tooling with them. I grind, for example, my threading tools on this guy. I even use it as a small bench grinder because I have a fine 80 grit wheel on here. Where I use it to resharpen my, my scraper blade because I can put on a fine diamond wheel. And then I can freehand the, the scraper blade on the diamond wheel. Or, yeah, there are a thousand uses for this guy. It's expensive, but yeah, it's, it's expensive and it's not expensive when you compare it to a professional or a uh, European made tool and cutter grinder compare. It's, for me, it's an essential machine in a machine shop. Some people think that they are. 
they are useless. Some people think that they are just good for uh, D bits and or engraving cutters, and yeah, everybody has their own opinion. And I have these machines have saved my butt so often at work that I don't want to be without one. Um, this machine came also with attachments. There was a spiral flute grinding attachment to grind the spiral flutes of end mills. I sold it. It's useless in my mind. Um, this machine is not rigid enough to do that operation. And also, the, the range of adjustments are very small to, do, to accomplish that work. Also, it came with a drill grinding attachment, which worked, but I don't use because it's a pain to set up. And it came with a, a lathe tool grinding attachment that replaces the, the normal dividing head up here. And I sold that too because I don't use it. Um, there, for this work head you can get square collets or you can just use round high speed steel tools for the lathe. What I do when I have to grind a tool on the sky. Um, so I sold those accessories that I don't use. I only need the dividing head. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.